Um, I, I wanted to welcome everybody um, to our sixth week of our webinars on the CDC um, Guide to Promoting Mental Health and Wellbeing in Schools. Uh, this has been a great opportunity for the Department of Education, as well as our educational leaders across the state to come together and talk about this new resource. Um, and, and we're very grateful to have you joining us today. Today, we'll be talking about um, providing uh, psychosocial skills training and cognitive behavioral interventions. Um, as a reminder, uh, my name is Ken Radiola. I'm the Mental Health Distinguished Educator for the Maine Department of Education. And I'm joined today by Susan Berry, who is our Health Education and Health Promotion Specialist, and Tammy Diaz, who is our one of our school nurse specialists. The mission and vision of the Department of Education. Uh, it is the mission and vision of the Maine Department of Education to promote the best learning opportunities for all Maine students by providing information, guidance, and support to our schools, educators, and leaders, and by providing adequate and equitable school funding and resources. And then as an overview, um, we've done our, our, our welcome. We'll continue with the overview. We'll discuss strategy five and provide a brief overview. Um, we'll have small group discussions focused on today's topic. We'll report out to the larger group and then we'll um, do a very brief summary and talk about what's coming next in uh, in our webinar series. And we, we, do, we will have some um, kind of exciting news to share about our seventh session. There's some hot off the presses CDC news that is um, very helpful and related uh, to the guide. The, as a reminder, um, we wanted to um, recognize that every school district and, and perhaps um, every participant is in a slightly different place in regards to our readiness um, or our um, where we're at with our implementation strategies or with the CDC implementation strategies. And um, we respect where everybody's everybody is your experiences, and we are um, really so grateful for you participating and aiding the learning of others. If, as we go along, you have any questions, uh, please feel free to drop them in the chat. If we don't have a chance to answer them today during the session, we can answer them or pr and provide additional information in the, the weekly summary email that Tammy sends out. And we'll be dropping the link to the Promoting Mental Health and Wellbeing Action Guide um, into the chat box so people can follow along if they need to. As always, we wanna create a safe space for collaboration. Um, we value the experiences of each of you, your schools and your communities um, and everything that you bring uh, to our webinar today. This is a safe place to come to, um, discuss and share experiences, ideas and knowledge uh, this is meant to be an interactive and engaging experience so that we have, uh, in order to do that, we have a few norms that I want to review. Um, for those of you who have been in previous sessions, the, we're continuing to use the same group of norms for consistency. Um, we're going to assume positive intent. We're going to um, share the air. Uh, we'll contribute gems that can help the group learning. And then um, hopefully we'll all be We'll all be dedicated to, to learning as, as well as teaching and sharing um, with others. And these same group norms will continue into the week seven. This week, we'll be talking about the, the fifth strategy in the CDC guide, which is psychosocial skills training and cognitive behavioral interventions. Um, these can be delivered in schools um, in a number of different ways. They can be delivered in one-on-one -on -one settings or or one in one one on one meetings. They can be done in, in small groups or they can be done in, in established classrooms. Um, psychosocial skills training and cognitive behavioral inventions teach specific skills to students to help them cope with challenging situations, um, to help them set goals, and to understand their thoughts, and to use problem solving strategies to, to change behaviors. And as I work in a, a regional day treatment program, 
for me, one of the most important things is that problem solving strategies uh, to change behaviors. Um, once students start to, to develop the ability to, to use some of those problem solving skills, um, it, it really um, makes a huge difference for them um, in my experience and, and in my classrooms. And then um, again, schools can deliver these interventions in one-to-one -one settings, small groups um, in classrooms. Some interventions focus on concepts that are also taught in social skills and emotional development programs like self like self control and decision making. Approaches to provide psychosocial skills training and cognitive behavioral interventions in schools may include promoting acceptance and commitment to change, providing cognitive behavioral interventions, and engaging students in coping skills training groups. And we'll talk a little bit more about those in coming slides. Promoting acceptance and commitment to change. Um, psychosocial skills training intervention asks students to explore whether their behaviors align with their personal values, and if not, prepare them to make behavior changes. These interventions also promote acceptance of one's current circumstances in ways that are similar to mindfulness which was, for, as a reminder, was, was one of our other, or one of the other CDC strategies in the guide. Um, a specific type of therapy, dialectical uh, behavior therapy incorporates both mindfulness and acceptance and commitment principle. And then um, they've provided several, uh, in this area they've, ex they've provided the evidence-based training um, teen talk. And the link is, um, in the guide itself. And I, I just printed a little bit of information on Teen Talk. Um, Teen Talk is a youth health education program. They provide services for youth from a harm reduction prevention education perspective. They focus on sexuality, reproductive health, body image, substance use awareness, mental health, issues of diversity and anti-violence issues. They adhere to the belief that by providing youth with accurate, non-judgmental information, they can make healthier decisions and choices for themselves. And then they have a, a number of, of different topic areas within the, those broader categories that are built into the program. And the, be, the benefits of um, promoting acceptance and commitment to change are an increase in students' coping skills, a decrease um, in depression or depressive symptom, symptoms, and a decrease in somatic symptoms. Providing um, cognitive behavioral interventions is the next part. Cognitive behavioral interventions teach students how to manage their thoughts and behaviors. Cognitive behavioral interventions in school often include multi-small group or individual sessions that follow a standardized manual for activities that help students examine their own thoughts and behaviors. Um, research on cognitive behavioral interventions has shown significant improvements in the range of mental health outcomes in students, including decreased internalizing behaviors, such as feelings of anxiety, withdrawal, or depressive symptoms, and also a decrease in post-traumatic stress. Um, small groups and one-on-one -on -one cognitive behavioral interventions also have been shown to improve students' ability to cope with trauma and anxiety. The, uh, this particular topic in the guide has a number of uh, different resources that they have linked in the resource guide. And one of the, the things that I really like about it is that they've linked it to the multi-tier system of support and they have the, the proposed, uh, the proposed tier linked right into it. They have Lars and Lisa, which is a tier one intervention they have cognitive behavioral interventions for trauma in schools, which uh, is abbreviated CBITS, uh, which they identify as a tier two support. And then within CBITS, they also have modified that curriculum. Um, and you'll see that linked in there also um, as um, bounce back, which is for younger elementary school students. So I, I really like um, CBITS as a, as a concept because it, it has that, uh, or they've adapted that to meet multiple the needs of multiple different populations in our schools.
um, engaging coping skills training groups. Coping skills training groups use principles of cognitive behavioral interventions to teach students skills to help them build resilience and handle specific problems. Students can also use these skills to help them cope with their lives or when their lives are, are changing and our lives are, are constantly changing. Uh, coping skills training groups use principles of cognitive behavioral intervention by teaching specific skills for specific struggles in periods of adjustment. Like social skill, uh, like social skill and emotional development programs, coping skills trainings often emphasize strengths, strengthening resilience and learning to practice a growth mindset. Coping skills training groups have been shown to decrease anxiety and depression and improve coping abilities. And some examples of that are uh, Journey to Hope, which would be a tier one intervention, and High School Transition Program, um, which is a tier three intervention. And if you haven't done this um, already, I, I would encourage people to um, actually either bookmark th this guide on their computers or, or print it off or, or possibly both, depending on, on how you learn, because this is um, such a great resource. I actually have mine and it, it looks like it's been in my backpack for the school year. Um, we also focus on equity. The National Traumatic Stress Net Network estimated that close to 40% of our students have been affected by some type of trauma. Children who have been exposed to adverse childhood experiences and trauma often receive cognitive behavior interventions in schools because of their unique mental health needs. It's critical that students have been, who have been exposed to trauma have the opportunity to receive trauma-focused or trauma-informed interventions. Many schools have begun implementing full school approaches to create trauma-sensitive school climates. And then we have a few um, implementation tips that the CDC has provided with us with. Hi, Ken. I just wanted to add in here, um, oh, yeah. Susan had brought up a good point um, when we were all talking about this, um, is that um, some students might be impacted by trauma, even if they're not directly affected. And I think that's some, something that sometimes we overlook. Um, and that's the reason, because I and we had originally had affected by, by trauma um, on this slide. And I think that's just an important thing to kind of call out and think about. Thanks, Tammy. So, I, sorry. I almost forgot about that. <laughs> Um, then the, the benefits of, of team teaching or hosting. Um, some implementation tips, um, engage parents and students with deciding on relationship building programs, support professional development for teachers on classroom management approaches that build relationships with students, ensure parent engagement activities fit the needs of families. Um, and we all know that cognitive behavioral interventions and psychosocial skills training occur across a range of tiers for students' needs and grade levels. And this can be instrumental in supporting many student needs. Uh, for school administrators, you can ensure fidelity to implementation through working with school-based mental health staff to look for opportunities for students to practice their new behavior and coping skills and incorporating the multi-tier systems of support framework to ensure that all students are appropriately screened and matched with classroom, small group, and individualized interventions depending on the individual needs of the student. And Ken, if I can add in here, and this one of the places that these skills again would be practiced would be uh, through a health education uh, curriculum program. Perfect. And then it's my turn. <laughs> so it's uh, this is our time when we go into our breakout sessions. And the prompts that we have to focus on this week are what strategies um, is your school district or district using to teach students psychosocial skills and or coping skills training? What strategies is your district school using to engage students in cognitive behavioral interventions? How are they making sure that that 
uh, occurs and in what venues, that where and when part we talked about earlier in the series. And always wanting to be mindful of how is your school ensuring all students are engaged in learning these skills, not just select identified groups, but these are skills all students need. Um, and as well 